Welcome to a special edition of Extreme Reloading. You know, you guys are asking some really good questions. And shortly after we released an episode on reloading dies and setting up those reloading dies, a really good question came in from a couple of you. And that is, well, how do you know about this cam over? How do I know that I have, you know, adjusted that die to be just right to set the headspace correctly? That's a really good question. I kind of glossed over that uh, process, didn't really cover it in too much detail because I suspect I've been doing this for so long it seems second nature. But for those of you who are new at this, um, it's not second nature, it's not obvious. So I thought it might be a really good idea to spend some time talking about setting up reloading dies properly and affecting the correct cam over or the use of cam over to affect, uh, to correctly set those dies. Now what we want to have, of course, and now I'm, I'm going to be focusing on bottleneck cases that headspace rifle cases that headspace on the shoulder. Okay, so um, bear that in mind as we go through this. It doesn't really change much, if at all, uh, with different types of rifle cases, uh, but just bear that in mind as I talk about this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate this entire process. Come on around to this side. We'll take a look at what's happening on the reloading press. All right, I am using a 308 Winchester resizing die. This is a full length resizing die and happens to be this small base RCBS. And this is the type of die that I use whenever I am resizing 308 rifle cases for the AR-10, or more specifically, the HK MR-762 rifles. So what I've done is I have um, inserted or threaded in this die fully, all the way in. But just for demonstration purposes, let me show you what we're going to really do on a brand new die that has not been set up. I'm going to back this out. Couple threads. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower the handle, which in turn raises the ram. Then I'm going to turn this die down until I feel it make contact with the shell holder. And I feel that right now, but if you look closely, this is not fully seated or threaded into the press. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise the handle and thereby lower the ram. And I'm going to turn it down that little bit more. In this case, it's about a quarter of a turn. I don't know if you notice that, but it's about a quarter of a turn. If we watch you know, some sort of indicator, it was about a quarter of a turn. Now it's fully threaded in. And this has been set for this round, so I know it's right. But what's going to happen now and I lower the handle and raise the ram is that at a certain point that handle will kind of stop. You'll feel a resistance at that point. But if I give it a little bit more pressure, push it down a little bit more, that is the cam over. I'll lift that up again, all the way down, that's the cam over. What's happening on the die? Let's take a look at that. Now I'm lowering the handle, raising the press. This is the point where I feel the resistance in the handle. And you'll also notice that we do make absolute contact between the shell holder and the die the, uh, itself, the base of the die itself. The cam over is this process. Did you hear that? Let me do it again that little bit. You didn't notice much, and if you really look closely, maybe you'll see this, that little bit of extra pressure being exerted. Let's watch this a little bit more closely. This is the point where I felt resistance, and now the cam over. Did you notice that little bit of movement? Just that little bit of movement, and that's what we like to see. That's what we need to see. Now I'm gonna back this off. I'm gonna go back, move the cameras again, and I'm going to talk about how do you know when the cam over and the die set is absolutely correct. So when you're first setting up your dies, 
it might be wise not to use your best or premium rifle brass. They all have to meet the same SAMI spec, so using less expensive, uh, run-of-the-mill, let's say, brass will work out just fine to help you set this die correctly. And, um, and just in case you kind of overdo things, uh, you won't really ruin a nice piece of premium brass. But how do you know that you've done things correctly? I mean, you can measure some overall lengths and those sort of things. The case is going to grow and you've got to trim it, so that's not really going to tell you too much. The best thing that I've been able to do uh, is to use a cartridge gauge, or sometimes called a headspace uh, gauge. This one happens to be made by Hornady. It's fine. It works out just fine. I really do prefer the uh, L.E. Wilson dies. This is a cartridge gauge or a cartridge case gauge. They look very similar, actually. They look very similar to one another right here. And what you're going to do is you're going to drop that case into this um, gauge and really closely examine it. If the case does not fully seat, then you know you have not affected the correct um, resizing on that full length resizing die. Uh, if it is inserted and it's below flush on this gauge or one, one of the gauges that you're using, you know that you've gone too far. You need to back things out on your resizing die. And then, of course, it's one of those Goldilocks situations where we want things, once again, just right. So let's take a look at this nice and close with a correctly sized 308 Winchester case. All right, this is our Wilson case gauge and a resized 308 Win case. Gonna just, just drop that in there, and that's what we like to see right there. Okay, notice it is not protruding. There's that little cut that you'll see right here, and that's kind of your min-max line, right? So as long as the case is not above this part, and it's not below that recess, that slight recess, as long as you're working within that, that's perfect. This is the Hornady case gauge. It's good also. Take a look. And of course, that case passes this test as well. This is probably the best way to really test those, um, those cases and make sure that your die, your resizing die, is set up properly. So that's the process, folks. Excellent question. Thank you for asking. And if you've got other questions, feel free to post those in the comments. And we'll see if we can do a nice, short, brief, uh, to-the-point video to get that question answered for you. Thanks for watching.